Hi everyone, my name is Jarek from Genius Gecko, and in this video we're gonna talk about Jira roadmaps. Uh, this is first video of a series, in the next videos we're gonna talk about advanced roadmaps, uh, but in this we're focusing solely on the Jira roadmaps that should be available on all uh, instances where Jira software is installed. So, uh, let's take it away. So, what is Jira Roadmap? Uh, Jira Roadmap is a feature that allows you to graphically present a lot of information associated with your plan and with timeline of your plan of your work. So, what you're seeing now is a roadmap. And we can see that we have a timeline. So, at the top we have, we have months. And we see how our epics are planned on this timeline, when they start, when they end. Uh, so you can already have kind of a familiar feeling about that uh, because it looks a lot like a Gantt chart that is uh, a tool that is widely used in project management. It's not fully a Gantt chart, it misses some feature in my, in my view, but still it allows us to graphically present our plan uh, and this is form of, of data visualization that is way more useful and convenient to use uh, than standard features that we had uh, available in Jira like planning per sprint. So you can plan per sprint uh, easily, you will know what to do, but if you would like from this screen to see, okay, when we are finishing work on certain epic, it's not that easy to see here. Uh, so roadmaps allow us to get a bigger picture or higher level picture of our work, of our plan, and, and have a better understanding on what we're standing on. Before we'll dive into discussing specific features of a roadmap, it's important to understand that the roadmap is always associated with Jira board. Uh, so when we create new board or where it is created for us when we create new Jira project, uh, we will have several, let's say, modules over here, and all of them are associated with the same set of tickets. So I have this P1 board, which basically covers all the tickets from the project one. Uh, and you can see that in backlog, I have multiple sprints and quite a lot of issues in the backlog itself. That means that on the roadmap, I will see the same issues, the same set of data. Uh, of course, most of it is hidden at the moment, uh, but roadmap, backlog, and other, other elements over here operate on the same set of tickets. If I would have another board, uh, like the Kanban or two project boards in this project, they could have different set of issues and roadmap for these boards would contain different information. Uh, so important to, to remember the scope of the data on the roadmap is always defined by the scope of the data in the board. Okay, so let's look at what we can see over here. Uh, so obviously the main part of the roadmap module is the timeline. So we can see, uh, yeah, basically a month. We could switch this view to either uh, weeks or quarters. We can focus on today, uh, depending on what scale of the timeline we want to see. And we see a list of epics over here. Uh, you can see that each of them or all of them are collapsed. We can expand them. And then we will see the list of the issues in the epic with some basic information like key, the summary, status, and if there is a signee, also a signee icon. Uh, and for, well, not for each of them, but for some of them, we will see also the bars on the timeline representing when they start and when they end. Uh, so this already gives us information, quite a lot of information actually about how we are standing with our work, how our plan does look like. So we can see over here that this epic should be finished in January. This, on the other hand, should already be finished, right? So 
Uh, this allows us to check when each of the elements of our work will be delivered. Now, the question is, okay, but how these bars are defined, how the start and end date is defined? Uh, because you, you could see that if we expanded this, the task actually did not have any start and it, the, the bars were not here. And we'll co cover that in the moment, but at the moment, we are just planning the ethics. So if we hover over the epic, you can see that we have two dates over here. We have some date. This is the 12th. Uh, this is the 26th of December uh, 2022 and no due date. This means that we have a start date of this epic set, but we have no end date set. So if no end date is set, uh, by default, the end date will be put to month uh, later than the start date. So basically we are ending on 26th of of January. If we click on this, uh, you will see that the start date and the due date are a field in, uh, on the issue level. So basically you can manu manually set the start date and end date uh, of the epic. Let's do that. We'll say that uh, this epic will end on the end of January. And you can see that this actually expanded. Now, if we hover, we have a hard set start date and hard set end date. So we can manipulate how long this bar is uh, by manipulating the, the start date and the due date uh, custom fields on our epic level. It's possible that we not always want to do that, but we'll cover that in a moment. What else we can see here and we can do here? Uh, so when we hover over the bar, you can see that two, uh, two dots appear over here. These are dots that are allowing us to create dependencies between two uh, tickets visible here. So I will do this like that. So I will drag and drop this dot to the other issue. And this created dependency between two epics. You can see that this dependency is at the moment red. This is because this dependency cannot be uh, respected because this epic has a start date uh, that is earlier than the end of this epic. So we would have to manipulate the, uh, the start date of this epic uh, for the link to be respected. Uh, this is valuable information because if due to moving the issues between the sprints, uh, for example, I, I'll show you the example later. Uh, you will break that kind of dependency. This color will inform you that something is wrong and something requires replanning. Uh, so in, in, this, in this case, we would have to look into this developer epic and maybe replan the issues so that they are uh, delivered somewhere in February. So what else? Mm, at the top, we can see the sprints or we can see that the bars representing the sprints. They're, they are available here because if we go to the backlog, you'll see that I have multiple sprints defined over here, five of them actually, and each of them has start and end date. So Jira understands when each of the sprints uh, is starting, is finishing. Technically, it's possible to define the sprint without those two, but without those two, they would not be available uh, and, and usable on the roadmap. So it's good always to define start and end date. And uh, because we have done that, here at the top, we have the sprints visible, so we can see that, okay, probably uh, the last sprint in which we can deliver task for the PO epic is sprint four, because sprint five is already uh, uh, finishing way after this epic should be finished. So red, let's drill down and look at the task level or story level, not an epic level. So as we've seen before, uh, we can expand the epics here and we will see the list of the stories or tasks. But you can see that they are not visible over here. So basically at the moment we can do the planning on epic level, but not really on the task level. This is due to the default configuration of the roadmap. We can change that. And to do that, we can go over here, configure roadmap. 
and enable this feature child level issue scheduling and i would encourage you to do that in my view this should be the default setting and now when i get back to the board and to the roadmap when i expand these issues you will see that we have tasks over here and we can see that they are planned on a specific period on the timeline uh, how they were planned where you can see at the top that they basically overlap the sprints so when the task is assigned to a specific sprint uh, jira understands it as yeah so basically this task should be delivered on, in the time frame of the sprint right so it plans it over here uh, yeah, so, so we can obviously do that by going into active sprints and assigning tasks, sorry, going to backlog and assigning tasks over here by drag and dropping them from the backlog. But what is very convenient and, and great in my view, we can assign them also over here. So we can drag and drop them between the sprints, right? And you can see that, yeah, th this is basically uh, the only way so you cannot plan task somewhere in between the sprints uh, you can plan them only over exactly overlapping the sprint this is why i told at the beginning that it's not fully a gantt chart well this is one of the reasons uh, because the planning is done only in agile way and we can plan tasks only uh, in sprints uh, yeah, but anyway, from this level, we can plan them or move from the sprint to the sprint. And if certain task is not assigned to any sprint, we can just assign it by clicking on a specific sprint. So uh, you can see that this one, it's nowhere to be seen in our sprints. If I click over here, it will appear in the sprint. It was automatically assigned to that sprint. So we can see with when, when working with our customers, that there is a lot of a, a lot of situations when this is preferred way to plan a sprint uh, so for example if we need to deliver a certain epic by by given date uh, we could do this do, do this in the backlog so basically yeah, find all the issues that are linked to to our epic and make sure that all of them are planned uh, latest for example in sprint 3 but it's not as intuitive not as convenient uh, it's way easier uh, in the roadmap and and we see that a lot of people like to use this feature a lot okay let's let's return for a moment to dependencies uh, i've shown you dependency between epics but another reason where planning sprints in the roadmap is more effective are potential dependencies between the tasks because if you create dependencies over here you will see whether you planned the task in the right order so here you can see that yeah it's this task is dependent on this one it might not be best idea to plan them in the same sprint uh, so it's red, but if the order is maintained, this task should be delivered before this sprint earlier. So we should be able to start working on this with this without problems. These dependencies are not visible uh, in the standard backlog. So uh, yeah, for planning again, for for planning where there are existing dependencies, this again is a better way uh, to do that. Uh, and by the way. If we go into the task, you'll see that these dependencies are represented on issue level as links. So it basically creates a block link between uh, two issues. Okay, so let's now talk a bit more about uh, dates and the planning of epics, because this is, this is something that I told you will return to. Uh, at the moment, you can see something really, really interesting that uh, this epic actually ends or is planned to end before last task in the uh, in this epic will be finished this is why we have over here this exclamation mark so that this situation 
would be visible even if, if the epics or issues assigned to epic would, would be hidden. Uh, and it basically informs us that, hey, if something is not right, the child issues are, are uh, not aligned with the parent issue. This happened before we manually set the start date and the due date, right? So let's now see or check what happens if we remove the due date. You remember that initially, uh, when due date was empty, uh, basically on the timeline it was represented as it would be a month later than the start date. But this was the case where issues below the epic were not planned on the timeline. So what happens now if we remove that? Okay, you will see that it automatically expanded to end at the same moment as the children. Let's try to move the child to the next sprint. It expanded, awesome. So basically you can see now that the, uh, where the epic is on the timeline is dependent on where the child issues are planned, uh, in which sprint. So again, this, this, this gives us more possibilities to check, okay, if you want to know where we'll, we should be finishing the work on the epic, uh, you do not need to plan it separately, check each time someone asks you uh, where all the issues will be done. Uh, you can basically uh, ch check it from, from this level just by looking at the single uh, at the single bar and you know that the moment some issue will be pushed to another sprint, uh, this will be updated. Uh, okay, but now we have this case where start date is for this issue is set and the end date or the due date is uh, is empty so it's put or it's it's filled based on the children issues we've seen that if due date is empty it basically uh, updates based on the children but what with a start date it was set what if we try to make it earlier okay i cannot make it earlier because i have no earliest print but let's try to change the start date let's try to say it will be two weeks later maybe it was shortened and now i'll try to pull this task to the earlier sprint it allows me to but still the date over here was set so this epic or bar of this epic did not expand to earlier and again we have notification here that something is not right here if we want to have fully flexible bar uh, that completely depends on the children, we need to have those two dates completely empty. Uh, and then the epic will always be, or the bar of the epic will always be dependent on the children. I'm not sure if I updated this one, of course not. Mm -hmm. Let's make it empty. Yes, and now it's fully dependent on the children and I cannot move it. So, yeah, I think that that kind of flexibility is a very good thing to have, uh, especially if you do not really have strong or hard set delivery date for the epic van, it will just be, uh, it will just represent you the factual uh, plan when the epic will be delivered. On the other hand, if you need to deliver the epic uh, for specific dates, there are two ways to do that you can either set due date manually on the epic level when you know that it will not expand uh, on the timeline and if some child would be then delivered later you will be notified here by this exclamation mark or you can make the end date flexible and just monitor uh, whether it got moved or not i prefer the first scenario where there is exclamation mark over here but it's, it's according to your preferences. I've seen customer uh, doing both. Okay, let's quickly cover other options that we have over here, and then we'll move to, to discuss the biggest flaw or the biggest uh, weakness of Jira roadmaps that I see. Yeah, so what we have at the top, we have pretty good filtering. So we could filter by status category, we could display just one epic. Uh, so obviously, uh, if you're doing the planning, a lot of epics will have like dozens of tasks. It might not be convenient to display all of them at once. 
Uh, but yeah, we'll able to filter out issues uh, or epics with, with their issues just like that. So you can focus on one or two epics that are especially in, important for you at the moment and hide all the other ones. Uh, we can filter by li label, issue type, use one of the quick filters that can be can be defined with settings. I will not cover that at the moment and clear filters. At the bottom, we've discussed this one already. Uh, so I think that most of these things will be pretty intuitive and, and self-explanatory. So what is the biggest weakness of this tool? So, so the biggest weakness is, is a limitation in the scope of the data that we can display over here. I told you earlier that the scope will be the same as the board, but it was not entirely the true. The scope will be the same as the board only if the board covers single Jira project. So basically uh, all the, the, this roadmap all the dependencies, all the, is, all the timeline is available only for the single Jira project. Now, you may ask, hey, but we can actually create a board that covers two projects, right? So I did that. I created two, two, two boards project. If we go into configuration, uh, you would see that it basically is based on the filter and it has issues from two projects. So in my case, it is uh, P1 and P2 project. And I, roadmap is available here, so maybe we can work around that, but sadly not. Uh, roadmaps are designed only for a single project. So if you have multiple teams working on multiple Jira projects and you have dependencies between the, those two teams they need to coordinate, roadmap will actually not help you too much. Uh, advanced roadmaps is the tool used for that, but we'll discuss it on, in, in next videos. Uh, so basically, the only way to go for you would be to have multiple teams working in single Jira project, which not always is the best idea. At least in my experience, uh, it's good to have narrower uh, projects with narrower scope. Although, again, I've seen it working with customers. Usually this was for, for smaller companies uh, where uh, permission settings of a project were not that uh, complex and when you could just handle the amount of people and the amount of tasks uh, they were working on in the single Jira project. In a lot of cases, this will not be feasible. That's all for this video. Hope that you found this overview of the tool useful. If you have any questions, you can schedule a free session with us. Uh, we offer consultations, we offer trainings and also implementation services. So during their years, we, we uh, developed a pretty good uh, implementation process. We have very good re results with it. So if you have any questions, any problems, or if you just want to know if the tool is good fit for you, you can reach out to us to discuss this.